1105, Dr. Payne Show. Look at that. Phone line's open, ready for you. You have uh, something you want to talk about, some pain issues, health issues, 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. How are you doing, Bill? Good. You? Good, man. How's the golf swing? I have, I have not golfed this uh, this week. I have uh, not. But it's been... Eh. The back's hanging in there? Yeah. The well, you mean from the stuff from a couple of years ago? Yeah. 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 And again, like this is... The reality of this stuff is that it's management, right? So I... I have this chronic issue with my neck uh, that causes some ridiculous pain, which means nerve pain into, into my arms. And, you know, I, I manage it now and I and I do I manage it well enough that it doesn't bother me day to day, which right. is the goal. You got it. Uh, it's been with me now for two and a half years. It's never going to go away fully. Sometimes it's going to aggravate and be horrible. Uh, but my job is to to essentially make sure that I do the things that I need to be doing um, to keep it as healthy as possible. That so that day to day, like. And, you know, 99% of days, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I wake up and I and my arm's numb and sometimes I get these things. But, hey, that is that that is what pain management, injury management is. This wasn't, you know, some simple little issue. This is uh, a lot of things in my medical history led to that. Like I, I had uh, avascular necrosis in my hips when I was young, uh, which is essentially a vascular disease where the bone starts to die off. Uh, the long-term complication of that is arthritis. Um, so from that, and I also developed a scoliosis, a significant scoliosis in my spine. So I've got functional issues and it's no surprise that, you know, in my thirties after abusing my body in the twenties, uh, and in my teens with sports and activities that I'm going to succumb to some types of things. Uh, but the reality is, is about, uh, coping with it and managing it. Um, and I do all of those things. And, and again, the vast majority of that management falls onto me, not as a professional, but as a person. Right. And that that's the big component here. I see professionals when I need them, when it's really aggravated. I see people in my team for my own health care. But the vast majority of the time, it's making sure I do the right things. I avoid the wrong things and I do the proper rehabilitation for it. It's amazing how you, you, know, you mentioned your teens, and your 20s, the activity level and, and sports and, and doing some some physical training. I'm the same way. Deadlifting's back, squatting's back. Yeah. And, oh, look, my right knee starting to bother me. And you, heal, you heal so well in your 20s. Yeah. And in your teens, right? Like to the point where those things, like they'll bother you for a period of time, then they go away. Uh, But the reality is they don't actually go away, right? And how many times when you were a kid and people used to tell you, oh, you'll pay for that later in life and you don't believe it. And then you get older and all of a sudden now you're that that older person saying that to your, to the younger people saying, hey, you're going to, you're going to pay for that. Those things, it's just because when you're at that age, our bodies are so resilient that we can mask so much of that underlying problem. But right. It's a long race, right? Like, this is the thing. Life can be very long, right? Like, I know people are like, oh, life's too too short, right? But it can also be very long. And so very long means you need to also take care of your body for the long term. It's no different than thinking about, you know, retirement from a from a wealth perspective, right? A lot of people that you just live in the moment, you spend everything that you make. It's like, you know, what are you going to do when you retire, right? What if you, people, oh, I may not live that long, but what if you do? What you want you, do? you want to spend the last 20 years eating out of a soup can, like, because you can't afford food and it's no different with your body. It's like, no. well, what if you do live that long? Do you want to spend the last 20 years bedridden or riddled in a wheelchair or something like that because you abused your body um, too much in the beginning? Like, it, it, this is yeah. an important thing that I think needs to be a conversation that happens that that younger people need to understand that you're not you're 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 investing in the future you right every sacrifice you make now is for the investment of the future you and that again I, this is a healthcare related show but that can apply to so many different things in life um, but yeah you gotta you gotta make sure that when you're dealing with these things uh, even in your teens and, and your 20s, and, and maybe we don't focus on that enough on the show, right? We're always talking about the older population and things like that. But people in that age need to be getting the same type of care uh, for their injuries so that you you are, again, taking care of that future you that you don't know yet. And even if they don't have the injury at this point, at least, you know, open up their eyes to say, hey, you know what's on the horizon? I see guys all the time in the gym, 20s, 30s, heaving all kinds of weight. And I'm like, man, you're, you're renting it. You ain't buying it. Yeah, oh, yeah, going forever, kid. No, like, you can't. You, there's, trust me. And and I mean, you. I I was watching a documentary on Ronnie Coleman. Oh, uh, like and the amount. Anytime, Mister O, right? Yeah, yeah, and and just what the the amount of weight that he put through his body, and now the severe stenosis that he has, and the way he's. Um, you can barely walk. It's just crazy. Multiple like, surgeries. Yeah, yeah it's know. it's insane what's happened. But th- that 
Our bodies are mechanical structures. They wear and tear no different than a car, any other piece of machinery. It's just actually we're pretty good when you compare it, right? Like no car is really going to survive or most cars don't survive 80 years, but our yeah. bodies very much can. 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. Yeah, with that angle in mind, uh, not only if you're a part of the older population, but if you're a, a little younger, you got some issues, or you want to know what's ahead of you, give us a call here. 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. Dr. Payne Show, Global News Radio. It is 11.15, Dr. Payne Show, right till noon. 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. Info at paincarecanada.com as well. You want to reach out through email. Yes, yeah, of man. course. Call, whatever it is. Uh, happy to help out. Uh, and no question is a bad question. Right. That's for sure. Um, I, I, You know, one thing that I guess I should mention, I, I not too, too often, but sometimes will get um, questions around cancer-related pain or, right. or cancer treatment-related pain. That's a whole different branch of, of pain management, right? That is absolutely not what we deal with. Um, and, and really, like, when you're dealing with those types of issues – the best th- thing to do is talk with your oncology team. Like they're the ones that that is that is a very so very separate entity on its own. Like and and there's a lot of things that go around that, and so uh, totally different. So that that is often something that you know because I say pain and injury and and uh, but unfortunately when it comes to cancer related pain. Um, you, you have to you have to deal specifically with the specialists in those areas. Yeah, your musculoskeletal pain, right? Yeah, well, cancer related pain is almost like it's funny. Sometimes when you, when people look when we look at pain in general, like as we, if we looked at a broad class, right. we would say pain and then uh, cancer related pain, right? So really? non cancer pain and cancer related pain because that that's how important cancer pain can be, right? Like it, it's its own distinct branch uh, of medicine. What else happened this week? What's going on with you? Uh, so I, so well, with me, I've my, I have family here from out of town, so I've been busy with that, and I haven't been in the office. Uh, but lots of calls um, and lots of emails. Um, always, you know, the 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 stuff we we always hammer on the neck issues, the low back pain issues, uh, knee issues, hip issues. Um, you know, hip arthritis is is something that uh, has been coming up a lot lately. Why? Um, I don't know. I don't know. There, I find that maybe it's just because we talk about something and people hear it and so they call more about that. I don't think there's a higher incidence all of a sudden of, of hip pathology and that's why people are calling. Um, but it, it's it's really, really important. Again, very similar to knee osteoarthritis. It's a progressive process um, that happens, obviously, as you get older. Uh, previous injuries will expedite it. Uh, very common, like there's a lot of weight that goes, a lot of pressure that goes through um, the, the hips and the knees. And so they wear down. Um, and, uh, in that wearing down those, those, those structures start to break down. And really with the range of motion, especially in the hip, you start to lose, um, you start to lose your ability to, to, to walk. Right. So you'll start to get a limp and things like that. Um, and it's, and it's very, very important that you get a, like with all osteoarthritis, it's really important that you start getting assessed and, and have those x-rays every few years just to see the progression of things. Um, some people have s- such bad osteoarthritis, but they want to avoid surgery. The reality about osteoarthritis, that process of calcium being laid down and becoming more bone doesn't stop when the bone is literally bone on bone. What happens is more bone will be laid down, and because it's laid down, it actually displaces the bone. Yeah. Right, so this is where you see people all of a sudden, you know, in in their eighties start to become bow legged and things like that. Like once that happens, you that's just an absolute disaster at that point from from every aspect, from the pain aspect uh, to the functional aspect. So I know people want to at all costs avoid surgery, but at a certain point, uh, if you're at that point, like you really, really need to consider it um, because it is important that you don't let your bones displace because it can affect your function. It can affect the pain levels with that are tremendous. So um, we see a lot of that where people just want to keep delaying it, keep delaying it. Um, and, and it is important to find that balance. Like what is the right amount of, you should, if you're too young, you want to delay it, but you also don't want to be too old, right? right. Uh, because as you get older, your prognosis goes down for recovery after surgery. Um, so, you know, there's there's a good in between there and i mean it's very hard to say what that in between is but as a general rule we would say like you know 65 to 75 like somewhere in between that age but that's di- that's different for everyone i, I know some 65 year olds that are more, ancient and yeah, some are great yeah, yeah and some that are just like you you'd think they were 40 so yeah. um 
it, it always does go, this is why it's individual, why you have to assess the individual and look at their prognostic factors. But as a general rule, I would say with, with uh, joint replacements in the 65 to 75 age range is sort of a good range mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, uh, of when you'd want to do it. And if it's earlier than that, you'd at least want to try to delay it as close as possible to that range. And if you're after that, then all of a sudden prognosis does go down, unfortunately, because the older we get. And, you know, at that point, it's relative, right? Like every year is, yeah. it can be significant. It, I've seen a lot of people that will come in and say, um, you know, dad or mom or whoever, whomever they're bringing in is uh, 92 and they've just like started to deteriorate in it. And it started last year. Like before that, nice. they were doing that. It's like. But sometimes you're going to get to the straw that broke the camel's back, no right? Kidding. Like, and and they're sort of looking. Well, what can we do? And it's like, but they're 93 now. I'm not yeah. saying don't do anything, but that's the reality of aging. And I think at a certain point, we sort of have to. Families need to accept that too. It's like, well, there's not going to be at a certain point that that process will just sort of start to snowball because their body, like we have, a, yeah, you're we, almost 100. We, we don't live forever. Yeah. Right. Now, if this is all of a sudden you're 40, and then at 41 everything changes, well, that's right. different. But you got to make sense of things. You too, don't live right? forever. You got to, and you got to yeah. be realistic. Unless you're Keith Richards, on, then you're yeah, be exactly. Forever, yeah. Four one six eight seven zero sixty four hundred star six forty on sale. You have uh, some pain concerns. You want to know something about your health? This is the hour to bring it on here, Doctor Pain Show, Global News Radio. It is eleven twenty four. The phones are wide open. Four one six eight seven zero sixty four hundred star six forty on your cell. You know it's funny. You're talking about age and the way the basins change. And you'll remember, it wasn't too long. I remember back when, you know, your grandmother was 75 and she was a little old lady in a rocking chair with a blanket. You know, my mom, my mom's birthday was yesterday. She's 10 years past that, but yeah. she's still young yeah, at yeah. heart, right? Yeah. Her knees well, are shot, but well, she's still young but at that's heart. But that's what sort of we were saying, right? Like people are living much longer, right. which is why it's important to take care of our bodies when we're younger, right? Because like there's only at a certain point, once you get to a certain point, wear and tear, that's not a process that you can stop. People come in all the time with arthritis and, you know, I walk them through what it is. It's like, okay, well, what can I take to stop that? It's like nothing. Like it's a progressive process. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what happens with it. It's progressing. It, it is the reality of wear and tear of our bodies. Like, and, and, you know, there's some stuff around stem cell injections and things like this, but not enough that, you know, it's widespread that everyone could be doing it. I also don't think that should be the goal. I think very much the goal of healthcare nowadays, I think we're really starting to move towards um, prevention. And I think there's been a shift in that where we're, we're very much realizing, like, I remember growing up and everything was about like finding a cure. It's got to, there's got to be a cure, a cure, a cure. You don't hear that that much that often for many things. Now it's all about like early detection, prevention. Like those yeah. are really the things that we're Get stuck. a handle on it early, right? And deal or, with or it. Or if you can prevent it, and if you can't prevent it, how do we detect these things early enough right. that we have a good enough um, medical system and, and medical knowledge that we can intervene early enough and get rid of these things? And then what do you do after that in terms of, again, preventing it from coming back? But that's, and I think the world is starting, that mindset is starting to change uh, where we're going from this idea of cures to uh, prevention and early detection. Um, and, and that's a very, very important thing. But it's the same thing with the musculoskeletal system, the body, right? It's, it's prevention and early detection, right? Like that is what I talk about on the show all the time. What can you do to avoid these types of things? And if they do happen, how do you intervene early? Right. So we're not we're not singing a different song here. It's the it's the exact same thing. Um, and again, people will very much understand this stuff for heart disease and stroke and uh, any other, you know, thing that is is more worrisome. But when it comes to pain and injury, it's like, eh, you know, like whatever it is, what it is. It and, happens when it and happens. And I'm not going right? to. Yeah, I'm going to wait, you know, a couple of years before I find how many people do we get? We get calls and they, they say, I have this problem. Um and I'm wondering what I should do about it. And usually my first question is, have you seen anybody about this? No. That is the first thing you yeah, should do. Good start. Like, that is the first thing you should do. It's not a surprise. That's going to be my answer. If you have a problem and you've seen no professional about it that deals specifically in this realm of pain and injury management, then you haven't done anything yet. That should be step one. And I don't know why that's such a foreign topic. It's amazing, isn't it? Right? Like, I don't know why that doesn't make perfect sense. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, well... 
what did you think? Like, if, if you had had a heart attack, wouldn't you have or seen just, something? Nah, not it? yet. Yeah. yeah my yeah. car died. In the, I had a towed home, not to a mechanic. No, not yet. I'll yeah, deal with I'll, I'll deal with it whenever. Yeah. And and so, yeah, I think it, it really, it's, it's the same type of things that we're applying to everything else. Prevent it if you can, right, by doing the right things and avoiding the wrong things. And early detection. Um, and, and getting it dealt with the, with the professionals, and then you do the right things. 416-870-6400, star 640 on sale. If you have uh, anything you're dealing with or questions uh, you want to ask, this is the uh, the hour to do it. We've talked about before as far as nutrition playing a part in it, and some of the old schools like, oh, when I grew up, we uh, everything was organic. We had no pesticides. We ate whole foods, yeah. so on and so forth. But it's interesting because, and maybe this is just through medicine and what you do, people are actually living longer than they did. I mean, 40 used to be a middle-aged guy you know, yeah. a few decades ago, yeah. 100 years ago. But they claim back then everything was cleaner and better. I don't think that's uh, so I, true, right? It's it's hard to say. I don't know. But I also think we just – we have a better system to – we we understand much more, right? Like right. when people say, "Oh, that stuff never used to exist." It's like it, it existed. Yeah. We just didn't know what it was. Yeah, mental health's always been around. Yeah. Well, yeah. even other things like yeah. you know, people will say like, "Oh, you know, cancers weren't as prevalent once upon a time," and it must be. Well, maybe we just weren't as good at diagnosing them, right? Or like you know, I, I remember um, when I was a kid asking my dad about his dad who died in Italy, like during the war or just after, I think, um, and. You know, it was like he went to bed one day and he didn't wake up. And I said, yep. well, what's that from? Oh, I don't know. Back then you just, you, 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 buried just, him. you just sort of died and that, yeah. and that was it. So there was like, okay, well, that could have been anything killed right. him. Like, and if you don't autopsy him, you don't know that he had, I don't know, whatever crazy neurological yeah. disease or it was a heart attack or it was this or it was right. that. So it, you just didn't know. But we, we are living longer because we definitely have a better medical medical knowledge. And so we can stop a lot of things. There's no free ride, my friend. no. no. We'll take a short break and right back at it. 416 870 6400 star 640 on sale. Dr. Payne Show, Global News Radio. 1031, Dr. Payne Show, 416 870 6400 star 640 on sale. You still have a half hour to call through if you have uh, some pain questions about yourself or uh, calling for a family member. That's cool as well. Um, some big uh, changes happening with you. You've got the clinics up and running now, but Pain Care Canada is uh, changing to Pinpoint Health. Yes, and then the show will be rebranded as the Pinpoint Health Show in a few weeks as well. Um, I got the alert on social. Thank you very much. I'm no part problem. of the group. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah, check us out on social. You can check me out at Dr. Lou um, on either Instagram or Facebook or Pinpoint Health on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever uh, you like. Um but yeah, uh, no no change in terms of team, right. any of those things. It's just a rebrand in terms of name. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't mean anything in terms of anything more than just a name change. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A, yep. it has nothing to do with any of that. So it's not going to change how all of this works anyways. Um, even with the radio show, it, it will still be the same yep. things that we're discussing. Still a call-in show. How's the? Uh, we you know we heard the uh, the promo there for the PRP. Now we've had uh, in the past Dr. Bagov and Dr. Gordon on yeah. talking about how is that the knee clinic was getting really busy there for a while. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's still very busy. We see a ton of knee patients. Um, uh, in in terms of PRP, definitely, uh, it's an option, right? Like it's it. But there's a threshold, correct? There's a threshold, but here's the other thing. I get a lot of people calling, looking like the, and I love the commercial, but the one problem with that commercial is that they're calling and they're saying, I need PRP. And it's like, well, you you may not know what you need. Right. So that's step one. It's always about, well, let me assess you Mm -hmm. and see if that's going to be of benefit to you. And I think I've said this before, out of all the people that see me that want a PRP injection, I'm usually recommend, and these are people that are already calling in saying like, yeah, sign me up. I want that. Yeah. I 50% of those people I often say, no, no, don't, don't do it. It's not, th- that is not going to be the solution for you. Or maybe with that money, there's a better solution or, and, th- and that's, a, yep. and that's a realistic thing. So uh, I'm happy to have that conversation, but I, I think there needs to be, that's another paradigm shift that I think needs to happen is you often hear people uh, undergoing whatever, all they know is what they feel. Right. Okay. And then right away there, they think they know the answers in terms of what they need, what tool they need. But I think that's where the professional has to come into play. And I think that's where 
professionals that have all of these things at their disposal are always better than a professional that only has one tool. And I've talked about this where there's a lot of clinics out there that are just selling one thing, right? Like it's some some machine or something and it's like that is the cure for everything. And it's like, well, it might be the cure for something, certain certain umbrella uh, things under under the spectrum. But if you're advertising that that is what you can help everything out there, well, a little closed minded. I think it's reductionistic and it likely doesn't work because I mean, the best research on, on m- most pain and health things is that multidisciplinary approach, multimodal care, uh, various professionals, various modalities, rehabilitation, exercise, uh, diet, nutrition, uh, sometimes assistive devices, et cetera, et cetera. You got to use all of the tools that we have at our disposal, and that is the best chance at uh, getting better. And that's what we're doing. We're not, the pinpoint health is not, you know, we have this one thing and you come and, yeah. you, and, and that's what you get. And no, no, we, I don't know. It's, I always get this call and it's like, I don't know what I'm going to recommend for you. I have an idea after I talk to you, sure. I but I have an You're idea. Ballparking that, it, but yeah, you got to get the assessment. But I've there. got like five or six ideas, and it's like mm-hmm. I really want to do my job and, and my due diligence and give you the right specific answer to you. That's where I need to see people. That's where I need to speak with you, assess you, move. Again, it's a mechanical right. If if a mechanical problem needs a mechanical intervention, it likely also needs me to do some mechanical testing. Sure, right. It's not enough to just talk to somebody. It's uh, how does this thing move, or is there any weakness in it like there's so many things that go around the physical exam and i need to do that in order to say okay here's what you need um and 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 that's an important thing and it's just this foreign idea that i don't know people with the mechanical issues not thinking they need mechanical you know it's incredible you know how many people come in and uh they've got a shoulder issue an elbow issue whatever it is oh i went to see somebody blah blah blah. they told me to do this it's like well did they even move that part of your body around no they didn't even touch me well, okay, how, um, how how did they get, like, I know, again, I can hear something and think, okay, this is the most common diagnosis, but you're missing out, you're not doing, you're, the professional is not doing the full extent of their job if they're not actually grabbing you and doing some testing. If they're not doing that, then to me, that right off the bat, it, it's it's incomplete. It's incomplete, and if it's incomplete, then likely your care is going to be incomplete. Do you think this is partly uh, the onus of the patient trying to find the path of least resistance? Because it, it can be work. Getting better and coming to your clinics can be work. You've got to come in for the assessment. You've got yeah, to, oh, yeah. It could be an hour and a half. The a- Everything is work, right? right? Like all of it is – these are not – like there'll never be something – with this type of stuff, right? Like we're moving towards a world where it's all like that Amazon world, right? Like we yeah. want to be able to order something and not you leave. Bet. Like this type of stuff, the physical care of our bodies is, I, I, I mean, I'd be very surprised, but I don't know how it can ever become like that where it's so path of least resistance. Like I don't want to dedicate the time. Like you're going to have to go somewhere. You're going to have to do these things. But, you know, everything that that is worth it sometimes requires some type of sacrifice. And like, we're not talking about a sacrifice for the rest of your life. If you want to get better and you want to do these things, then, yeah, you may have to come in a few times a week for a few weeks. Uh, it's going to take an hour out of your day when you do come in. Like That's the reality of it. We can't control that. That's that's just the way this works. This is the way life is and the, and the body works. 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. we got uh, some more time here. This is the time of the show when everyone floods the phone calls, so try to space it out a little. Give yourself some time to get some answers. 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. Dr. Payne Show, Global News Radio. Yep, you got time. 416-870-6400, star 640 on cell. Info at paincarecanada.com to reach out through email as well. Nancy, thank you for uh, for hanging on there for a couple minutes. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, about a year ago, uh, I started to get swelling underneath the uh, right knee, um, and then the pain followed uh, whenever I put weight on it. I had a CAT scan done, and um, the issue from the CAT scan indicated uh, that uh, there was, a, they used the word fracture. Okay. Um and I'm, I don't know what that means. I haven't been able to get back to the the surgeon because he's dealing with another issue on my left on my left foot, and so he won't do two things at one time, which is rather annoying. Um, however, uh, that's the way it is. But um, they talked about um, an insufficiency fracture of the medial tibial plateau. And, oh, okay. And my question is. Uh, yep. 
Should I be doing anything? Should I be doing any exercising? What can I do to, to stop this from getting any worse? Yeah, I mean, it's very hard to say generally what you should be doing. I think you need to be seeing a professional like a physiotherapist or a chiropractor to walk you through, yes, some treatment for sure. Um, I was a little bit confused when you originally said just fracture, the word fracture, because that's a break in the bone. Well, uh, I know, and that's, that has surprised me as well. Right, but then you said the insufficiency for fracture of the medial uh, plateau. tibial plateau is a little bit different. So that's sort of like some minor breaking that's happening at the top of the bone. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and it's a little bit different. It's sort of like, it's sort of like a stress fracture in the foot. So like people think fracture and they think trauma, right. Yeah. And like a, a, like a big break, but this is sort of like small breaks that happen yeah. over time because of wear and tear. Okay. Um, and, and yeah, so, but I do think you need to be doing something for treatment. Uh, but I, I would need to assess you in order to be certain on where it is. I'd need to look at the scan a little bit closer, do some testing to you. The other thing is that a lot of these things, it's correlation, right? Like people have pain and then they see something on imaging and they think, well, that must be the cause of the pain. And that's not may not necessarily be the case. You you might have pain due to something else, but you also have this ins- insufficiency fracture um, or maybe not. I don't know. But that's that's the whole yeah, point the, of the assessment. The pain came when the swelling came. Right. But again, so those things happen yeah. over a long period of time. Is Are you controlling the swelling at all? Uh, not really. So you don't ice elevate any of those things? Yeah, I do. I, I elevate and I ice. But um, How often are you icing? It's not huge pain. It's not huge swelling, but it's, it's there. Yeah. How often are you icing your knee? Oh, maybe once or twice a day. Okay, good. Yeah. Have you done any therapy whatsoever or no? Uh, no, because I've been waiting uh, to see um, what the next step would be, and uh, since it's, it seems so difficult to get, and it, this has been look at it. this was a year ago that you saw this person. Uh, you, no, no, I didn't see them. I, I noticed it a year ago. I finally got to see them. Um, I guess it would have been December because the well, CT scan is of January. Okay, well, it's still a long time, and yeah. this person didn't recommend any treatment of any kind? No, no, because uh, he's busy working on my, uh, I have a bone spur that we're going to have to take out, and uh, so... Well, that's not, that to me, that's not a good enough excuse. It's not like, you well, can't, well you, no, you have another it, issue, and so we're not going to take care of this issue. Right. Like, well, it, maybe it's he can't, he or she fine. can't take care of it, but they can refer to someone who can, like, the, you yeah. know, and and... and this is the broken telephone thing. It's always very hard because sometimes patients also think that they hear something or they didn't hear something, but really the the doctor did say something. So, you know, this is where I, I would need to see you and just sort of assess it and go from there. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks very no much. No problem. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate that. It's one eight five 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 D R L O U again. One eight five 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 Doctor Lou. That's the number. Info at paincarecanada dot com. Mark, thanks for uh, hanging on. Good morning. Good morning. What's going on, pal? Well, I'm going to tell you. Um, I have an arthritic hip. Okay. I need a hip replacement. I can't do it. I'm a factor five hemophiliac, mm. and I've, I've tried. We we can't do surgery. Yeah. Uh, so I'm in pain. Right. And it's, I know what it is. It's bone rubbing on bone. Yep. And uh, I've tried um, medical marijuana. Uh, probably didn't give it much of a chance. I tried it for a month. It didn't really do anything. I tried um, acupuncture. It hasn't done anything. And um, uh, I, I take Tylenol. I take another uh, a medication for arthritis, but nothing seems to help. Right. So, is it something magic that's out there that's going to solve my problem? <laughs> no. So I think the mindset that you have around this needs to change. And this, and not just you, but a lot of people that have these issues. And there are there are a subgroup of 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 the population that can't undergo surgery like yourself. Um, but this idea that is there something that it's not just about help in the immediate like relief, but it's also about these things will help you control it and maybe delay it getting worse and worse. So that that sometimes is a mindset change where you're not doing these things to necessarily improve it in the moment that you're in, but at least keep it that way so that it doesn't continue to get worse. Because, again, this is a progressive process and it will get worse. 
Um, the reality is how can you at the very least slow that down? And those, all of those things that you mentioned at the very least will help to slow it down. The other thing is you got to give these things a a fighting chance, doing one or two treatments here or there, that type of stuff is never going to work. This, this arthritic hip happened over your entire life. How old are you, sir? No, it's happened over the last seven or eight years. No, it hasn't. The arthritis in your body happens throughout your whole life that it's a progressive process it it may have gotten bad seven or eight years ago but it's been happening your whole life and so when it's happening that long you know to do a few treatments here or there or try this for a short period of time and then this for a short period of time it's the wrong approach you need to be realistic with it um and 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 need to to give everything a long it's a long-term treatment process but there's no there's nothing magical out there that that i can tell you is the solution um therapy exercise yep that helps i gather good so you should be doing that and and you might unfortunately have to keep doing that for the rest of your life a couple times a week Mm -hmm. these are like i i always say like you know don't fall for these treatment centers where it's two times a week for the rest of your life but in this type of case maybe it is right maybe it is once a week for for the rest of your life because that's what you need to do to manage this like you know it's it's unfortunately the reality of this if you can't do the surgery yeah but there's no uh pain killer by itself that you can just take that'll make the pain disappear. There's there's painkillers. You'd have to try them and speak with your family doctor or whomever about that to see if there's different classes of medication that you can try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate uh, appreciate the call. We'll take a short one and line up some more calls. You have a question just like that. Well, not just like that, but you have your own question about your health. 416-870-6400, star 640 on sale till 11 a.m. Dr. Pancho, Global News Radio. Pretty soon, the Pinpoint Health Show, and uh, still, one 855 doctor Lou D-R-L-O-U, reach out, get that uh, assessment going, consultation anyway, just just get it. How Describe how that works. Yeah, you, you just call one 855 doctor Lou or send an email to uh, info at Pain Care Canada, um, and all it is is just we need to have a brief conversation um, and find out if it's some. The, the whole point behind that is it's very similar to the calls that happen on the right. radio show, right? I'm not, I can't give you an answer as to what you should be doing, but is it something that I could assess? Yes or no. And if so, if I can't mm-hmm. assess it, can someone in my team assess it? Right. Or maybe no one in my team, or maybe you're already doing the right thing. Um, but it's essentially just sort of like a, a quick consultation yep. is, is what it is. And then I, I mean, the real. I don't want to say the real magic, but where really happens is the assessment, right? That's where we we get down and and figure out what's going on, what's the game plan, plan of management in terms of getting you better, um, and then we try to implement that plan and and um, and we follow it. And I think, you know, again, I I'm open to the criticisms. I, I've always said it on the radio. If someone wants to call in, they've seen me or someone in my team. There's something that you didn't like. I'm happy to have that conversation. But till now, I've I've heard nothing negative. We have great results. People are getting better. They're learning. The biggest thing is their understanding around this thing, right? Like their understanding. Like sometimes people are coming in and it's a new injury and we can pretty much quote unquote cure that. Sometimes people are coming in with 10-year-old injuries and we're managing those, but we're getting people better in terms of of they can live their lives. That is the whole point of this so that they can live their lives um, and and get back to the things that they want to do or start doing things that they wanted to do. Um, and just be realistic with with their healthcare, and and that's what we're here for, right? Like again, we don't. I can keep saying it. We don't have any magic cures or anything like that. This is really about what's the proper care for your musculoskeletal pain and injury problems. Yeah, underline the word management. Really, that's always what it's about. Yeah, unfortunately, and again, there are going to be cases where you can treat somebody. It might be early on, and it completely goes away. But I don't like using the word cure because cure would mean it never happens again in your life. Can we? Can can you get treatment with us? Do the right things, and you don't feel the issue for twenty years? Yes, and and I get people coming in saying, you know, I, you know, I had this knee problem, and then it was cured for like twenty years, and then it came back. Well, it wasn't cured then. Yeah, it was you just managed it, it managed incredibly it. well. Yeah. 
right? And 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 that's not a bad thing. That's a great thing. Um, so some things can be managed really, really well to the point where it may never bother you again, or it may not bother you for a very long time. Other things are just management day to day. It really depends on what the issue is. That, that's the the thing here. It's hard to say what. That we're not clumping all this together. We we provide individualized care for individualized problems. And the, the thing is just getting people in the mindset that it's going to be some work. And I don't mean work isn't difficult, but it's going to be dedication to get the to yeah, get better you, you, in most there's, cases. Yeah, there's right? going to be a component that they have to do for right. sure. Um, and, and if you think that you don't have to, then then maybe we're not the right place for you. because And, and unfortunately, you're likely not to get better. That's the other reality is any place out there, there's lots of good places that you can get this stuff. You don't just have to get it from Pinpoint Health. There's you Do your own research. There's there's good places. There's also bad places. Mm-hmm. Uh, but any place that's good, you're going to have to do work at it. If, if you're not doing work, if there, if you're having a conversation and there's nothing involved for you to do, I, I, I can just pretty much almost guarantee you that that's, that's not the right form of care. And get your head around the mental aspect. Try to go in positive, 100%. right? Hundred percent. Well, try to go in at least with an open mind. Right. Doesn't this, like you can be, you can have some, you know, reservations, ask some questions. But I mean, if you're that person that's like, oh, nothing's ever going to help I me. If, if, that, if that is your attitude, nothing's ever going to help me. You're absolutely right. Nothing right. will ever help you. If that is your mindset, I don't know how you can ever, how someone else can ever overcome that if you right. can't overcome it in your own mind. So, yeah, if you're if you're walking in there saying, yeah, but, you know, and, and we see that all the time too, right? Like, oh, I'm here because someone told me to come here, but I know there's nothing you can do for me. Great. All right. Well, you Have know. Have a nice day. Yeah. Like, yeah. I... I don't know how any any healthcare professionals ever going to overcome that. Now I have this conversation with them. I try to tell them like, "Hey, listen, like barrier number 1 here is that, that attitude. If you're going everywhere and you're saying nothing's going to help me, now is it because you actually believe it? Some people like here's another thing. Some people just don't want to get better." Yeah. I know. Some people have a lot of excuses not to get better, and they don't want to get better. But that'll be a topic for another show. And we'll take it from there. You want to reach out, one 55 doctor Lou D-R-L-O-U, info at paincarecanada.com. We'll see you next weekend. Dr. Pain Show, Global News Radio.